Uh, good morning, friends. Have you all joined today? Can I have a look at everybody? Please. Can I have all the students to switch on your video first? Very good, very good, very good. Yes. Can I have all the 24 participants, please? Krishna, Krishna Sai, Anandi is busy, visible. Yeah, Krishna Sai is here. Vaishali. Okay, Anusuya, you're Anusuya. Okay, right then. So we should start now and others will make their entry. Am I audible? Am I audible? Okay, so I shall first get on to the, thank you, you can switch off your, uh, uh, all can mute your volume, voice, all right? So, and uh, we shall get on to the speak, I shall get on. Right then, so first I'll take you to the syllabus and uh, Can you all see the syllabus now? So we have this yogic diet, which I'm going to handle. And um, uh, this is a kind of uh, uh, thing which some of you know already something about the yogic diet, but then we will try to highlight and undergo more in depth. So the syllabus, which is given by Sports University for MSc Yoga is very simple. So it comprises a very small unit and uh, unit one, two, three, four, five. And if, today I'll try to uh, finish off to the maximum. So first goes with the food in ancient texts and systems of medicine. Then we will be dealing with yogic diet and then one by one we can come on and then general in, I mean, introduction to ahar concept of mitahara and classification in yogic diet according to traditional yoga texts. Diet according to body constitution that is based on the year that is prakriti, and then we will get on to the concept of diet. Okay, so sh let me get on to the um, slides now. So, So, okay, so this is yogic diet. This is what I'm going to present to you all. And uh, uh, I have shown to you very shortly the, uh, what are the syllabus that we are going to cover, right? So when you look into the text, Uh, ancient texts, that is all our books, uh, as I've been speaking in my earlier classes also, all the Vedas and the Puranas are basically written in Sanskrit. And uh, they have spoken very high about the diet that an individual have to take it. So I have been speaking about we all are born Indians. So uh, our, we all belong to a gene which had come from Vedic period right from that only we all have originated. Now, based on your liking, you all have changed your, um, some of you have converted to some kind of religion based on your uh, likes, right? So you don't have to feel bad about reading something about the scriptures of Hinduism because that is the origin. We all are of the same gene and we all hail from the same uh, genetics of Hinduism. And from there we have been now divided so this is the concept please keep it in your mind and then try to keep learning and um, so uh, just a moment huh? that just a moment just a moment okay so we'll start now so the basically the sacred uh, uh, hymns which are 
சரி ஓகே தேங்க்யூ so uh, the basically what we see is that the vedic books that has come out you know that only speaks about what the basic indians have taken their food based on their demands okay so there are four vedas as i said samaveda rigveda ajurveda and the uh, adarva veda so those four vedas basically speaks about these uh, Uh, literature which speaks about the food that we basically those in ancient indians had consumed so food items mentioned in vedic literature the vedic literature throws considerable light on the food and the drinking habits of the people of the indian his uh, ancient india i have already said to you any book uh, written during the ancient time like iliad and odyssey written by omar during the greek period if you take puranas if you take any um, epics like mar ramayana and mahabharata whatever you take you know uh, even the old and if you even go to the italians and the uh, uh, the greeks all those people you know they all uh, everything reveal is been revealed their lifestyle the social habit their business their financial condition everything is revealed only through the literatures that had been written by those people so so is the case that when we look into these books they throw upon all that and the food items in the age of brahmanas so brahmanas is not the the caste which was been mentioned out there but they have spoken about the complete society uh, that lived during those period were called as brahmanas so uh, the uh, uh, the food items in the age of brahmanas that is brahmanic age omar age or uh, pur- puranic age that is called as age age means the period right so the indian food was basically be, uh, totally or like rice wheat which appear to be more common and it is the staple food even now that had been used earlier and then meat eating in the ancient india is also been mentioned in ancient india meat was not only eaten but was also regarded as the best kind of food so when i will be speaking to you about the uh, different types of protein and other things then there, there i will speak to you about the non veg so what is the concept of ahar ahara is again a sanskrit word but it is also used in tamil and very even even in hindi it is sanskrit it is used so ahara means anything which is ingested ahar eat taken inside which is ingested which is take for digestion and thus it includes both drugs you can also call it as drugs and then your uh, food both are called as that so acharya gangadhara says that anything which is ingested by the tongue down to the throat are called as ahar so the moment we touch it on the tongue some of the people you know uh, they don't even touch their teeth and but they will try to take their food so drink coffee without touching the teeth you know some kind of uh, they will have their fasting method of doing that so ingested by the tongue down to the throat is called aha therefore drugs are also included in aha from this itself we can conclude that the word aha means any substance that goes via your mouth so something which goes through vein right we call it hello yeah so if it goes to the vein then we don't call it as a drug it is called as so, uh, uh, ingestion through veins it is going the, those glucose and other things are going for some it will not touch the tongue but from here after the operation from the throat they try to directly uh, provide it to the human being right so ahar is the food which is again taken and it is eatable either you lick it drink it or chew it so these are the three things which takes place in ahar and food has been given the prime importance during this vedic period and even in the brahmas in upanishads so kashyapa gives the name of uh, mahabhishsai sajya right so that is responsible for the growth development if you don't eat proper food the growth will be retarded the brain will not grow your body organs and system will not grow so that is why it is been given as prime important uh, um, importance so that you can understand how important the food was during those period so food is said to be the suprema the brahma the creator you know the highest uh, it is so first respect even when they eat you know food should be above your uh, some of them used to say it should not touch your feet something like that so some way or the other they had certain methods of eating and respecting that and all the beings originate from the food so food, uh, every you know you see insect to uh, tree plant you know animals you may everybody uh, gets originated from the food and food is responsible for life of the, all being 
So annam, anna, anna means food. Is present in all living being in the form of food, shelter, and an maya gosha. So when you see the concepts of the body, the anna maya gosha, the prana maya gosha, you know. So in that anna maya gosha finds a very a vital place in the center of their madhyama of the stomach, where the food need to be sent in. So it also emphasizes that the chakras are are, are also touched while you eat the food. So food, body has uh, as well as disease are formed by food. What you eat today, what you are, it is all based on your lifestyle. So lifestyle also includes the food habit of an individual. How you sleep, how you walk, what is your daily routine. Whether you sit in front of the computer or you uh, you sit in front of the TV or you have you spend your time outside or with the friends, so all that comes into and food is one of that which speaks about your uh, complete life. So in few, uh, later in the um, uh, in my classes, I'll just tell you what are the other side of the food if taken high, if taken low, what is malnutrition, all that I'll be speaking later on. So wholesome and the unwholesome. Some food are broken and it is taken. And some food are taken as a whole, so it basically is responsible for happiness. So if you feel you had a food and you feel you you are happy, okay. So if you're happy, that means the food is very pleasant. If you're not uh, uh, happy, like it comes dakar uh, and it burns your throat, right? You're not able to sleep. You're just moving here and there and there, and you're struggling to digest. And then some of the people will take on top of that one kind of soft drinks to digest that. And um, whenever you go for taking some kind of, say, um, deep fried chicken or pizza, whatever you take, you know, they'll give buy pizza and you take free of uh, free of soft drinks. So why the soft drink is given basically is because it has got the carbonated drink, the hydrochloric acid, which gets inside and it it tries to uh, digest the food, which is uh, which cannot be digested very easily. So that is how they have the trend of giving the cool drinks while you go for buying your food. So anna food is the best among things which sustain life. So if you want to live your long longevity or healthy life, it depends upon the food that we take. So very recently I had come across some kind of uh, um, uh, educative thing which was given in my uh, uh, computer, stating that a set of people who live some some place closer to Pakistan where the people for even for three months they live on apricot so um, and they don't die very at very young age their skins are so beautiful and they don't attain age at all uh, even till 110 the ladies look so young so fine their skin doesn't get falls into wrinkles and all so why because of their food habits so the first thing that they have targeted they have not spoken about the weather they have not spoken about anything only they have highlighted is uh, is only the food that they take. So they basically depend upon the, uh, even for three months, they rely on fruits and the fruit juice. I don't know what is that particular month that they get on. So your longevity of the life totally depends upon the food you take. The, and uh, what we take based on that, only the diseases will also attack us. So this is a great science which has spoken about this. The diseases can be occurred without any medication by just following wholesome regimen. So uh, whereas even hundreds of medicine cannot cure a disease in absence of wholesome regimen. So you keep taking uh, medicine, body will not heal. Unless you have modification in the food habit, only then you can. So if you see even Corona, whatever you do, you know, even if you pay bill of three lakh rupees in a hospital and you are discharged after Corona, you see the medicine that they would have given is only... 450 rupees. What is that? If you see the prescription, only paracetamol, acetoril, and some kind of uh, vitamin tablets. That's it. And para, sorry, paracetamol. So these are the three things which is being given for your three days and rest of the days only based on your diet, you get healed up. So uh, that is the world that now the world is getting onto the actual, uh, you know, uh, concept of ahar and the annam that we used to have during our ancient times. So no medicine is equivalent to food, right? So food is the only medicine. So it is said that uh, uh, if you take food as a form of medicine, nobody, you need not have to go to doctor at all. So it is possible to make a person disease free with uh, just proper diet. That's it. Yeah. So food enhances your vitality, your strength, 
it makes you stronger it increases your brain power grasping power memory power the fire in you you know whether you are cool calm or balanced your life span your uh, your your liking your you know anger your luxury your aspiring for some bad thing all that depends upon the food that you basically take so health is is totally depend upon the food that we basically take right so uh, what are the humors i'm just going based on the syllabus so next comes is the humors and the causes of the disease so when you look into the causes of the disease that i have been speaking very uh, uh, in my previous slide also so it was not until the time of hippocrates so if you if you see hippocrates is supposed to be one of the most phys biggest physician actually so he's a physician hey, between hello okay so uh, uh, hippocrate who lived somewhere around 450 and 350 bc that is before christ that rational observation and the human theory of the medicine began so he being a physician he started with that philosophy of the medicine and then the theory of humor that is called as humor which came into influential and people started following it and uh, they understood that the human body to be composed of fluid that is only then they understand that the our 70% of the body comprises of only fluid so water water is the basic thing which uh, our human body comprises of and regarded as a disease as a result of an imbalance of the four humor so when you see the vada pitta that is yellow bile the black uh, bile the bile is been produced by our liver right so uh, which is if you go for vastra dhoti you can come out with the yellow color you know uh, vastra dhoti it comes out even if you go with the um, vamana dhoti also after taking water when you go with kunjalini it comes out so the yellow bile comes out and there is the black bile you would have seen after the operation is over you know some of the post operative patients will have the bag with black color thing over there so that is called as black bile and then you see the phlegm phlegm means sali or the um, which comes out of the nose and which is the main cause for corona and blood so these are the three things which uh, which speaks about the fluid in our body so what are the four fluid again i'll recall in the body yellow bile black bile phlegm and blood so these are the fluids so body is basically if you want to make any test you know you can go with the blood test and that will speak about your uh, system right so when you uh, there is another concept called as mithara so what is this mithara mithara is uh, is again a sanskrit word which is come out from the uh, uh, also used in hindi also literally means the habit of eating habit of eating so what what is your habit i love drinking i love smoking i love taking pan parag i like taking some kind of tobacco so this becomes your habit some of the people cannot live even without keeping some kind of um, bad things in their mouth which leads to cancer and anyway, we all know all that right so it basically the habit of moderate food you need to have if you can eat moderately correctly that's it that's how so i later on in my later slide i'll speak to you about it right so mithara is also a concept of indian philosophy uh, particularly in yoga that integrates awareness about food drink balanced diet and the uh, consumption habit so uh, how much of drink after how long do you take your uh, food after one food to another food or when do you drink water up while eating or that so what is the kind of balanced diet you are taking whether you take whatever you get or you are very choosy in eating right so all this comes into the concept right so um, and its effect on one's body if i take say a biryani and i don't digest at all it keeps giving me a burning sensation on my neck then what happens is i get vomiting i am not fine with it so my body is not accepting it so you must understand yes so uh, and its effect on one's body is the main thing in my later slide i'll show you how it goes on with it and this influences my mind so if i go to the examination hall with the full stomach of such kind of uh, food which is deep fried and which doesn't get digested which disturbs me uh, with the dakar and some kind of thing will i be able to write the examination no that is why a kind of 
food which is being prescribed for the people who are going for the examination it should give energy throughout the uh, three hours that you're sitting in the examination hall it should not bring any disturbance in you mind should not get diverted because of the food that you have taken you should feel calm and your mind, brain should be awakening to write down the answer all right so it is one of the 10 yamas so what are the 10 yamas you would have uh, uh, seen the saucha okay and uh, I'll, I'll tell you wait a minute okay so So among these 10 sauchas, if you, uh, sorry, uh, yamas, you could see this eating is one of the uh, disciplines you need to have, like taking bath, like brushing teeth, like uh, uh, going to the toilet, cleansing yourself, and then all that, you know, uh, ahimsa, satya, uh, saucha, in that, you know, list, it comes one of the 10 yamas is the uh, food. So when you see the um, concept of it mentioned in various uh, books like Bhagavad Gita, if you see, you know, there are certain verses which has been uh, said about Mithara, that is the concept of food. And uh, in the chapter 6, they have stated uh, that a yogi must neither eat too much nor too little. So if you eat too much, you will not get sleep. If you eat very little, you will not get sleep. Neither sleep too much nor too little. So... Uh, you should not go to the deep sleep after the food, you know, getting up, uh, eating at one o'clock, say in the afternoon, then sleeping at two o'clock and then you sleep till eight o'clock and then get up at eight o'clock in the uh, e late evening and then you say, oh, I am like this. So no, no, that should not be the trend. So a uh, yogi, uh, the verses 6.16 um, clearly state what a yogi should eat. Even if you see the Samhita, that is Chakra Samhita and Shashuruti Samhita has also spoken about it. And uh, among the two largest surviving, uh, uh, speaking about the nutrition and the diet that they have survived from the ancient and the medieval period of India. So if you see the agriculture was one of the main thing, if you see the medieval India and the ancient India, and from agriculture, they went on to the neonatal age, then copper age, then bronze age, and then uh, the history goes with the different types of ages. Yeah. So next comes is your Hatha Yoga Pratipika. So when you see the concept of diet, which has been mentioned in the Hatha Yoga Pratipika, which also speaks about the, the verses of 1.57 and you can note it down and uh, through 1.63 of the critical edition of the Hatha Yoga Pratipika, one of the uh, editions, which suggests that the taste craves should not drive one's eating habit. So uh, you prepare a food which becomes very tasty and then based on the taste, you keep on eating. That should not be created. Rather, the best diet is one that is tasty nutritious and likable as well as sufficient to meet the needs of your body if i'm feeling happy then i'm i feel happy yes but it's not that i say for example i make adhirasam right so after making one particular sweet dish if i it is so tasty i cannot keep eating that that that, that and i complete the whole box that should not be the trend so what they say uh, uh, hatha yoga pratipika space that the food can be tasty, it should be nutritious, it should be likable. Next time when I serve you the same food, you should be able to uh, like it and eat it as well as sufficient to meet the needs of one's body. That is your vitamin, your mineral, your, um, uh, you know, what are the demands a body requires, you know, all that has to be met over there. And um, it's of one's body and one for the inner self. So one should feel satisfied. Yes, I, I have. So if you take, you know, one banana and then in the end of your food or whatever, you see, you feel so pleasant. So your mouth should feel pleasant. Your uh, your, tea, your mouth should not give bad smell. Your dakar should not, yapam should not come again and again and spoil your mind. You should not feel any burning sensation over your neck. So if, and your food, you are able to digest the food and after three or four hours, if you feel again hungry, yes, that food is really good. So that is how the yogis, you know, used to prepare the food made up of rice and dal, you know, when they used to get some arms, pichai, or beggar, you know, they used to go beg and come. And people used to add dal and rice together and put it in that particular bag they had. So they could not segregate rice and dal. So those people had a tendency of preparing both rice, dal, what was given 
together they used to cook it and eat it fresh only for that particular time they will not keep it for night or then so that is how it is and food should be, i'll speak to you in my later about this sadhavik food and other thing right so uh, it recommends that one must eat only when one feels hungry yes so if you see one wedding in india so you have a food they have 110 dishes you know even salt they will add as one of the dishes they like chili you know some kind of uh, pickles everything is added in that particular and uh, sometimes you know i had happened to go to one of the uh, merchant you know and in the wedding in that particular family so they were just giving adding 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 and when i was just asking what is this what is this stop stop no 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 i didn't want to waste so i had to every time intervene and say ask them what it is but they are so mechanical they know they they not used to they have 100 uh, plates from that end to this end they'll keep putting it you know mechanically and they'll run off so wasting food is not one thing that we need to have and after eating all that you know 110 dishes one will go forward you will be served some kind of uh, dry fruits okay you go further you will get in that uh, some uh, fresh fruits then you go further you get ice cream you go further you get pan you further go you get some beera some some something some kind of you know dishes and then you uh, let that be our scenario of eating so if you see it is only the lion which will not eat anything uh, if it is not hungry if it is hungry it can kill anybody as i said earlier so it is only human being who, who keeps eating whenever it is served even though we don't feel hungry we tend to eat so that is what so what the science says that had Uh, pratipika says that eat only when one feels hungry and neither over it nor to eat completely fill the capacity of one stomach so what they say is you need to eat uh, so that your stomach is 3 4 right so one quarter of your stomach is empty so that it allows the food to digest just like a mixy jar if you take a mixy jar and full everything and then try to switch on the mixy mixy will not dry uh grind at all so what will happen is everything will get jammed so is our case when we eat our food should be three fourth so that uh, it takes uh, some uh, hydrochloric acid to get secreted and then it gets digested and slowly and slowly the secretion of the stomach you know uh, it, it goes off like that so we should not go to the uh, place where we try to fill the complete stomach should not be our attitude so uh and fill the quarter yes and with qual uh, i mean quality food and fresh water should be taken so when it should be taken it can be taken either half an hour to one hour of your food intake so food need not be water need not be taken along with the food you can have the water one hour before so that your you don't eat too much right that is one concept second is you can keep the space so that you can drink some water after half an hour or one hour and allow the food to get so if you roll the mixy only with the uh, uh, things you know without adding water mixy will not grind at all you need to add water to it so that the uh, chat, whatever things you put it in the mixy gets digest, uh, grinded off so is the case with our stomach so you need to add little of water so that it goes and not immediately after half an hour or one hour allow the digestive juices like saliva like other hydrochloric acids you know to secrete by natural and then it gets digested so what are the benefits of food basically when you look into the benefits of food it has uh, it gives a complexion you know it gives clarity it gives a, a voice it goes with the longevity of the life intelligence happiness satisfaction nourishment you know one who is a drunkard who takes too much of salt too much of oil so much of uh, you know a fish curry mutton curry and all deep fried food they will be uh, they get angry very fast you cannot uh, like uh, control their emotions and all that but one who is with little of salt little of ghee little of uh, masala little of thing everything is pleasant you know their life will be totally different and uh, their behavior will also be different their grasping power will be different memory will be better so they will have good strength all that things are there so food helps in such sustenance of your life living being okay so you have to live live the life happily okay so life of it should be happy life not with the stress or with the disease or with some kind of you know 
uh, suffering should not be there. So all living being in the world requires food basically and professional activities leading to happiness in this world is the Vedic procedure leading to heaven. If you want to go to heaven uh, and observance of truth, abstinence leading to liberation are all depend on food. So if you want to tell lie, that means some food which has gone in can make you to speak lie. So that is why those days, you know, food was considered as one of the most important thing in their life. So what are the three doshas? There are dosha, as I've been speaking, even in um, Hippocrat have also mentioned about the bile production. So even in the liquid in our body, basically. So what it goes with is that these doshas are composed by combination of five elements. You all know, or the Panja Bhudas, five ones. They are space or ak uh, akash, right? Uh, air or vayu, fire or tejas, water or ap, earth or prithvi. So elements, these are the ones. So what are the, they create? They basically, they get into vada, that is uh, vadam, pidam and kabam. So these are the three things which is created in our body. So what food I'm taking, you know, today if I've taken potato fry and then I have taken some greens or dal and rice and then if I'm sitting in front. So if I take anything high, heavy, if oil is heavy, if ghee is heavy, if uh, potato is too much or rice is too much or dal is too much, anything, you know, if the food is imbalanced slightly, then it would lead to vada, pida and kapha. So all the three should be balanced in one individual. If one is lacking, I don't think things can go well. So how it, the balancing can be done? So what is these doshas? Doshas can often translate as biological type or constitution. Dosha is a Sanskrit word which means unfavorable. Okay. So which is unfavorable, flaw, not good, can cause danger. So anything, if vada is too much, then it will attack the joints. Okay, if pitta, pitta is heavy, then it will lead to some kind of disease. If kaba is there, then it will lead to some kind of you know, nasal cavity disease. So this is what a, a, dosha is, again, I, I'll repeat, it's a word which means unfavorable, flaw, not good, can cause danger, fault or disease, okay, etc. Against the cosmic rhythm, that is cosmic is our universal. So you are trying to do injustice to the body by eating the wrong thing. Therefore, doshas may be considered as a pathogen, pathogen or the factor which leads to or agent to disease. Say, for example, if you are taking everyday non-veg, the non-veg will not get digested. It takes nearly 48 hours for it to get digested and to be excreted from the your body. So if it, you are taking, you say today, it converts into a small ball. It, it lays in your uh, body and it will create a pungent smell in the body. And it would also lead to accumulation or formation of uh, uh, some kind of worms in the body. What happens is, and next day again you take, and every day when you take, there is a small ball of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, these balls. So after the fourth day, the Monday will get excreted. And when it goes, you know, it leads to some kind of diseases. Sometimes the worms are being created, which travels through the blood and it leads to and sits in the brain and it will lead to cancer. I don't know, some of you would have come across a person who takes uh, uh, something non veg which is not cooked properly. That could also lead to brain cancer. So that that is where if we, we don't eat a food which is not cooked properly and taken outside uh, wrongly cooked all these could cause diseases in ayurveda dosha is considered as the governing principles as every living thing in nature characterized by the dosha one second i'll just uh, try to i i just one One minute.
Okay. Somebody. Shall we start now? Uh, right then. Yes. Mabilda? Yes, yes, ma'am. In the sound, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, in your side, there is some kind of sound which is coming. Yeah. Thank you. Right. So, uh, I was talking about the Vada, Pida and the Kaba. So, what is this dosha? So, Ayurveda dosha is considered as the governing principles as everything living in nature characterized by dosha. So, uh, uh, the three Vada, Pida, Kaba, I said, and the five elements, that is the Panja Buddhas, I have just spoken about it. And how are we going to relate that with the human body and our food? Right. So Ayurveda dosha is considered as the governing principles that you keep it in your mind. These are the way that we need to have discipline in life. So Ayurveda philosophy, the five elements combines in pair to form three dynamic forces called as dosha. The three Abhada, Pida, Kaba circulate in our body and governs the philosophy or the physiological activities of the human body. Right. So there are distinct proportions. decide the individual temperature and the body constitution. So if you go to North India, they will have too much of potatoes or even if you go to New Zealand, Switzerland, what is your food that you try to maintain the temperature? They say they take potatoes. So they are all vegetarian, but the thing that they take is potato just to keep the body temperature. So if you want to keep your body cool in South, they'll ask us what to take. We take curd or we take more or we take um, uh, uh, what uh, some kind of food or the vegetables which take uh, contains more amount of water in it. So, so this is how the body temperature is also maintained because of the food that we take when it became unbalanced. If something is unbalanced, right, always keep it in your mind, leads to particular physical, mental, emotional disorder. So anything, even if you take your um, amritam, you know, even if that exceeds, you know, it leads to poison. So there is a very good proverb which speaks about that. And uh, the five elements and the doshas are basically the Panjabudas, as I've been talking earlier also. So the elements of air, and it gets combined in the form of vada. Okay, vada means vadam or air. People, you know, old people will say, kaattu pundulchi, vada is come inside, right? So when the element of fire, you know, uh, gets into the body too much, you know, it leads to water combined to form the pitta. Pitta means pittam, right? So when the element of earth and water combines together to form the kaba, so kaba is the sali or the uh, uh, we call it as you know um, which comes from your nose and all that you know that is called the nasal uh, secretion that could be one right. What is vada? So vada is the impulse principles necessary to mobilize the nervous system function. So basically, uh, vada predominates during the old age, okay? Uh, people who are old, sometimes even at 80, they are able, they are the governors in India, you know, they have good brain and they do work. But then there are some people, you know, at very 50 years, 55 years, you know, they become too old. And they can't memorize, they can't keep up your name and all that. It is all because they have, what they have been drinking, what they have been uh, getting into the habit, you know, it affects their basically the nervous system. So manifest as a uh, movement of the nerve impulses like air, blood, food, waste and the thoughts. So all these things are getting uh, influenced due to vada. It is characterized as the cold, light, irregular, mobile, mobile rare feel, dry and rough. You know, that is how vada has been described as. The function of vada dosha basically goes with the breathing, natural urges, transform the tissues, healing, uh, nerves functioning brain and the uh, you know uh, body uh, or the muscles and the brain it works and the sensory functions the secretions the excretions your fear your empathy your anxiety all that depends upon the vada so your behavior of getting angry your non uh, your violence can also result because of this also and it also leads to increase in the blood pressure increase in the gas formation in the body and would lead to confusion in you. A too little dosha, that is shortage of the vada can result in nerve loss. They say that a nerve will 
lose its functioning and it would lead to constipation it could also lead to thoughtlessness you, you cannot think you cannot bring out any kind of results from what you are at the moment right so too much or too less can also lead to some kind of problem in the human body right so what is according to ayurveda vada vada okay so vada is the element of air other combined to form the vada dosha so vada the prana which leads to wind inside the body so too much of gas when it's formed what it leads to now let us go from the down okay from down we are going apana vada apana vada is muladhara chakra gets affected samna vada where manipura ge, uh, chakra gets affected and then prana vada gets influenced due to uh, anahata chakra and then udana vada okay which leads to ajna chakra and then vishuddhi chakra is affected by the vyana vada so these are the uh, vada effect which takes place in the body now comes to the pitta pitta is a fire uh, uh, which is basically produced by the digestive you know juices so the principle using bile for digestion and metabolism and um, vada predominates into the teenage during hormonal changes and the adulthood so when there is a change in the puberty age it gets dominated and manifest as enzymes that digest food and the hormones so when you uh, what are the hormones that gets the, actually adrenaline is another thing which is an hormone which helps to activate your kidney right so manifest as the enzyme that digest food what a food is digested and then it comes out to the various organs like liver uh, uh, and then it comes to the gall bladder right so liver will digest the fats or the whatever oily food that you have or any medicine that you are taking all that gets ready and if you take too much of oil you know what happens the liver gets loaded so what happens is the oil gets accumulated in the liver it starts enlarging and then the bile production which is basically done by um, your uh, pitta pai pitta pai in solvang that is called as gall bladder that gets affected sometimes when you are too much loaded you know the uh, calculi starts forming over there and got, doctor would advise you to remove the gall bladder from the body so that becomes so if you are taking food which is very high in all those masala salt all that could affect the digestive system and then the bile production gets stopped so anyhow so this is how it works it is characterized as the hot light fluid subtle sharp this is the characteristics which has been mentioned by the scientists and the function of pitta doshas are body heat the temperature right it goes with that and then digestion perception understanding hunger thirst intelligence angry hate jealousy all that comes with the pitta so when pitta is too much you know uh, all these kind of thing comes when pitta is too less a shortage can result in indigestion so that is why we say that oil should be there in every food for the food to get absorbed by the body and to get digested and it also leads to inability to understand and sluggishness in the metabolism so if you take only rice only plain rice without any oil or um, if you take you know it will not get digested later on i'll speak to you about it in my other slides right so based on the ayurveda pitta what it says is the fire and water elements combine to form the pitta dosha it is the principle of transformation energy governs the heat digestion and metabolism so basically the uh, digestion is the basic thing which makes you know your metabolic rate increases or decreases whether you're thin fat whatever it is it all based upon the pitta so when you see from the bottom onwards we will go from the digestive part onwards so if the uh, um, panchaka pitta which leads to gastrointestinal Uh, area which influences that and as i've been talking about if your uh, uh, pitta is there only then the liver gets heavy liver gets affected that is uh, ranjika pitta and then if uh, the pitta is less then your skin becomes dry if the oil is less in your food the skin will become dry your skin will become dry and it become uh, wrinkled okay and it also influence your eyes also if it is less if too much it's another as i said earlier and it also influences your brain sadaka pitta so pitta has got again a five versions which you can uh, just see right so next goes with the kaba kaba is the sali or the sputum or mucus which is being produced from the 
nose or the lungs gets basically affected and it also gets into your blood also. So kaba is the water principle related to mucus, lubrication and its nutrient carrier. So this is the one which carries the nutrient through the blood uh, and uh, uh, kaba predominates during childhood years, okay, and during the time of growth. So any child, you know, they get very much influenced by the cold and they suffer from more of the cold. So kaba is more dominant among the childhood, during the childhood. And it also leads in the formation of the cells that makes up organs and fluids, which nourishes and protects them. So uh, it is not that you should, cannot be without any kaba also. Everything should be, as I said, should be in a sama. Sama means balanced. So it characterizes our oily, cold, heavy, stable, dense and smooth. It is, this is how it is being carried. Sometimes it is thin, it is heavy, sometimes thick, it is like that. It leads to cold. It, can, it has got different characteristics. So functions of kaba doshas are stability. It gives you energy. It helps in lubrication of the joints. Yeah, forgiveness, greed, attachment, uh, accumulation, holding, and possess so, uh, possessiveness. People who get lots of cold also can get away from the greed or possessiveness, and they don't get uh, uh, some kind of changes takes place. You know, when you compare a normal person and the person who keeps getting the cold. Right. So the aggressive kaba dosha can result in mucus building. If they get tensed, stress, because of stress, the asthma gets sometimes aggravated. Okay. So that is called as aggressive kaba dosha can result in mucus building up in sinus and nasal passages and lungs and the colon. Even uh, colon gets uh, affected because they will not get proper motion. So they get constipated sometimes. So too little dosha, that is too little of uh, kaba can result in experiencing a dry respiratory tract. So your uh, even your respiratory tract has to be wet. It should not be dry. And uh, the burning sensation in the stomach will also, it would lead to that. So people who don't have kaba, they will have stomach pain. They cannot digest the food. They cannot digest the karam or very masala, you know, such kind of thing. And it leads to ulcer in the stomachs uh, for those people. So everything, as I said, it should be balance. So when you see this earth and the water, when it's combined, it leads to kaba dosha. And when the kaba dosha uh, is too less or too high, it takes to the intestinal mucosal lining. If you take a food um, which is, um, say, uh, too watery, say if you take watermelon for and uh, give it to an asthma patient, it would lead to formation of mucus in the intestine. Thus, it affects all, immediately the lungs and lungs would affect the nasal cavity and the sinus gets affected. So uh, that is why they have to be very much balanced. Then if they take the food uh, uh, that is kaba is too much, that is too much of uh, like a, uh, tomato, too much of food, uh, allergen kind of thing. If you take it also affects the lungs and the heart. Uh, and it also gives joint pain for those people who get very often cold, could lead to osteoarthritis and then it could lead to um, um, even um, uh, what is it, joint pains, then they would all, it also leads to arthritis, osteoarthritis, both could be possible, right? So the ligament joins, the cartilage starts paining for those people with the uh, kaba, uh, kaba when it is imbalanced. And it also affects the oral cavity. So immediately when they get cold, you know, the, this throat area gets also gets influenced they can't speak, they cannot bring out their voice, they can't sing, it affects that. And obviously then this goes, you know, what happens is the cerebrospinal fluid also gets affected. It becomes too watery sometimes and then it affects the uh, tarpaka kabam. So that, that also it affects the brain also. So in all the three, even when you see, you know, the doshas are in, in perfect equilibrium. You need to have equilibrium, you should be balanced. So for that, and if you like ice cream too much, means you cannot keep on taking ice cream too much, right? So uh, there should be a balance of eating. This is the amount. If you like, say, protein, you cannot keep taking protein. So that is where we have to restrict ourselves to what we eat. So every body mm, tissues are functioning properly. If you have a balance of all these three doshas, and you can also see the waste products like uh, heavy urination will not be there. Too much of passing of facies will not be there. So it also affects the menstruation during the you know, monthly cycle. And it also helps in eliminating the times and the quantity. 
So if it is a balance, you know, everything will be in balance. Properly, a body will be cleansed. Properly, a body can be maintained. It can touch upon all the channels, okay? The chakras can be touched upon. It opens and it keeps you clear without any blockages. There will not be any blockages in the uh, veins, okay, or in heart or whatever it is. And your digestive fire is at its optimal level. So what you eat, you digest, you absorb. Your body gets uh, the benefits of what you eat. It would not lead to any kind of imbalance. So all the fire sense organs work work at its best, right? And then the body, mind, and the spirit as uh, is in harmony. So this is what we want. So body, mind, and our spirit. So how uh, I my I feel, you know, that is how my spirit will be feeling. Whether I feel happy, whether I go with this. So when this Kaba, actually this has to go with the Kaba, they have given some kind of signs that Kedaka Kaba abnormalities of the Kaba leads to high cholesterol, obesity, diabetes, and then gastrointestinal problem. If you have the Aval Makha Kaba too heavy, it would lead to uh, wheezing, asthma, cough, uh, and then uh, pericardial effusion. And then if you go with the Tarpaka, that is the brain, I have said, um, I've uh, compared all these things with you, you know, it goes from the down. Let me go with the down. Abnormalities of this cup would lead to uh, degenerative changes in the skeletal system, such as osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis. And then if it is goes with the your, uh, you know, uh, digestive system, it also affects the residing gums. Gum, gums gets infected and then it leads to tasteless. And if it is too high, it would lead to memory loss, insomnia, dry eyes, and then tumor. If it is gets into the lungs too heavy, I ask the man, this is how it goes. Right. Right. Let me now get on to, is there any questions you would like to ask me on it? Yes, all of you. Can I have everybody? Nebilda? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. They can ask, ma'am. Yes, you can come out with the this questions. Ma'am, this yeah. is Venkat Raman. Yeah, Venkat Raman. Yeah, just I wanted to know, like, uh, which type of this uh, kappa affects the, I mean, uh, vadam affect, uh, affects the joints and uh, the blood circulation? Yes. See, I have just showed you the picture of uh, the... Uh, you are asking only vada only, yeah, or kaba, yeah. vada. So I shall go. With, can you see this vada? Can you see now? Yeah, ma'am. Yes. So when you get into this vada, you you asked me what question? Which which type of? Which type of these three factors affects the uh, bo bone and joints as well as the blood circulation? It is only kaba. Kaba is the main thing which affects to uh, main uh, thing. And if vada means air, air gets locked in the joints, okay? And okay. Uh, uh, that could also lead to the immobility of the joints. The swellings in the joints could lead to. And if pith goes high, then also it could lead to the problems such as uh, this, right? Their eyes, the brain, the skin, liver, right? So too much of oily food can lead to all that. So I have been no, talking this is okay. that this is this is, this is okay. the top nose part. Yeah, pitta, kaba is the main thing. Pitta, kaba is the main. If you often more get cold, kaba or less kaba? more kaba, more kaba. If you take food which leads to food with the or uh, water content in it, like uh, um, pusinika, all are Tamilians or Hindi are there. Gauri, Swarna Gauri, your Tamil, okay. Uh, I'll just speak in Hindi also. So, uh, if you take food, just may pani jada hai, like um, kya bole? Uh, watermelon. Ah, wo to hai hai. Watermelon to hai hai. Uske alawa kuch like santra, uh, lemon juice, too heavy. But in Corona, lemon juice has given vitamin C. But then, otherwise, if the uh, content of uh, that kind of watery content in the blood, it goes, you know then it leads to kaba. So say, for example, you run and come. Okay, you jog, your body is full of sweat, right? And then you just come and take chill water. What happens is 
it will be there in your stomach blood will not take it but uh, uh, on top of that if you take something you know what happens the blood will absorb water content from the food take heavy so the uh, then what happens the eosinophilia contents in the blood increases very often a sneezing very often cold can affect the mainly the digestive system i'll get on to the uh, kaba okay so when you get into uh, this kaba you can see uh, the inter mucosa that is chali uh, chali okay or uh, nasal those container it forms in the intestine itself then it gets absorbed blood blood absorbs it it carries it to the lungs again the in the lungs what happens is the kaba gets accumulated once the kaba gets accumulated it gets goes on to the joints it gets the uh, an osteoarthritis uh, and then um, uh, rheumatoid arthritis it basically gets affected because of kaba then if they have the uh, throat pain it is another symptom of getting all the joint pains so any uh, iso test if taken you know tight test is taken and they will speak about this only and obviously when this throat gets affected then uh, they keep sneezing they keep the sinus gets affected uh, they can't talk they cannot speak it goes with that yes so uh, as i have said just now what is that kaba effects you can see the uh, yes you see in this slide you can see the uh, osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis that is kale shaka kaba so where is the kale shaka kaba it is in the intestine which is being formed and which which leads to degenerative the joints the 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 ligaments that uh, you know the muscle uh, gets attached to the bone through ligament that becomes more tender and uh, you see the cartilages which co connects the two bones that also gets affected and the bone gets eaten up because of lack of calcium so and this is how it takes to the rheumatoid arthritis yes so it is only the kaba next question ma'am how yeah. do we understand what type of constitution do we belong to see uh, um, now it will not get affected okay a stage comes where when you go imbalance either if you take as i said just now if you take too much of food which contains too much of water okay so it leads to kaba so immediately you will come to know that your body is cold body one rain dust allergy something like that it comes that means your body is been converting into kaba so you have to balance your food whereby you will start consuming a food which would lead to kaba okay if you get into pitta pitta means your gall bladder your liver that gets affected so what is the symptom of liver you get the black patches on the skin or you can't digest any oily food when you take you know that a symptom will come where you will get fever so fever is not that you just you take paracetamol and control your body fine uh, any body uh, fever is the indication of any dysfunctioning in the body right if you take food you get fever why because the food could not be digested so something is imbalance with what you have been taking so if your liver is loaded completely with only oil oil it will start bulging so next time when you take something very deep fried and food you know you can't digest you will get vomiting you should understand there is something wrong with the my food i need to identify that so you need to get on to the balance yes next okay. that's all okay so we'll get on to the slides again fine ma'am ma last question yeah just for my clarification is yes, there uh, any situation or condition where all these kaba are equal in any of the human body only in the young age it will be uh, balanced okay where uh, you eat anything you can digest okay even with the big stress even the mother dies or father dies you know the child will not get affected the child will sleep okay so yes. that is the period uh, where before the puberty age you know before the puberty age everything goes balance the child when is born after 5 to uh, puberty and then puberty to teenage even till teenage they can get balance so any child whose parents die before that you know they get balance to some extent right if somebody protects them or save them they can forget easily 
but after certain age now you uh, i my i lost my mother and uh, 15 years before i lost my father i don't know why i am not able to forget my mother the the affection that has gone into me whether did she did lot for me or she did not do that i don't know but then my mother's uh, i i miss my mother like anything probably the age is like that so uh, old age is the place where a body gets tired digesting eating working 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 and we must slow down our food intake we must slow down the time of rhythm of eating everything gets disturbed because of age so after 40 you should become alert 45 to 50 is an alarming period where you can modify yourself as you touch 50 one should be very conscious of not eating too much of sugar sweet salt uh, oil too much of sleeping so too much of eating everything should be in balance everything even walking if too much of walking again it will disturb so we have must have all the three balanced so that we can live happily throughout our life yes is that am i okay yes we can yeah but as of now in any of the asanas or any of the things like this is the limitations where you should go and stop that is not uh, provided in any of the vedas or in the sutras right see uh, there are asanas which can be performed like after eating food you can sit in vajrasana if you have vayu okay vada no, okay it's okay ah. not i mean about the limitation Limitation, limitation in the number of counts i am asking counts in the sense see for example padmasana you can sit for uh, one hour or two or something there is a duration frequency so that is what i am asking if there if you perform any type of asana is there in anywhere it has been mentioned you should uh, limit to this level one time or one round or two round or something like that see it is only we we have made it as a big business okay science right but there is only a mention of these things in the uh, texts indian uh, texts right so they have not said that you only have to sit in vajrasana if you see the japanese style of sitting they are sitting they are sitting only in vajrasana all right yeah, I know. so yeah, yeah. they don't get piles they don't get brain disturbed they have the spinal cord very straight their memory is fast they are able to work fast and uh, their eating habit everything gets digested so there is a system every uh, human being have formed so uh, in now our system is only it's become table chair earlier we used to sit down and then we used to eat and come like this so while you go down and eat you know it happens it uh, stimulates the uh, stomach the intestine so that the digestive juices are secreted when you bend down while sitting in uh, sudhasana or something like that and then you eat in the floor right the digestion starts taking place right the time it you start ingesting now we have become not even table we have become buffet so this is the plate and this is how we try to eat so how can you find that the food gets digested so uh, our habit food habit eating habit method of living lifestyle everything uh, influences that so they used to eat in green leaves right so uh, there itself you get that hydrochlor uh, oh, sorry chlorophyll gets in from the green banana leaf that itself helps you in digestion and when you eat slowly more of saliva is formed so when you uh, larish and eat you know the digestive juice starts from your mouth itself there are two three glands which secretes the digestive juices in your mouth itself and then when you ingest your food it gets digested very fast but now we don't do because we go to the buffet we go to the khali there are people three people standing behind me to catch catch my chair what will i do i will just eat fast 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 so that i will accommodate those people later on so what we do is we are now in a very world in a fast world where we are not giving importance to the taste or to the food just ingestion without feeling happy without feeling the uh, goodness of it okay okay vivekananda yeah ma'am proceed please okay right then so i shall now proceed now so this is how we have now come to the popular food of the ancient india where they have been they have spoken about of course the uh, rice wheat which is barley 
which was we served and they also went to the river side all the time to get fish as a part of their food and they also went for hunting that was always there and then uh, when you look at the popular food that they had basically was with the flour that is uh, god wheat flour then curd was one of the thing which they had they had porridge and uh, barley grains was one of that and they also prepared some kind of preservatives like cake a kind of different forms of cake they used to make out of the grains and uh, there is a mention of uh, um, among the preparation of the rice i mentioned as uh, odana odana is the cooked with water and uh, payasa cooked payasam uh, now also we take payasam and which is called as payasa cooked with milk and rice together and they also have the some of the food which is cooked with rice or barley cooked milk and water that that is how they make used to make swedish and um, special dishes meant for ceremonial occasions were also there and there is the mention of uh, dhania is very much there and um, they have also mentioned about the salt sugar in their food and um, there is another uh, mention of the pepper which was used black pepper was very often used by them and um, these were the few things which has been very highly mentioned in their food right so food items mentioned in ramayana when you see so there is a mention that the aryans were uh, accustomed to both vegetarian and the non vegetarian so vanaras the monkeys have been mentioned in that and were used to vegetarian food alone their food have been been fruits roots and the leaves basically and rakshasa has been mentioned rakshasa or ramanas were uh, uh, carnivores and they depended more on their uh, food even on the animals and uh, herbivores when you look into aryan people they used to have rice barley wheat and pulses they also seem to have used boiled rice which has become used to be one of the most popular food and the refined rice mixed with curd and milk was one which they enjoyed and there is a mention of uh, curd mixed with sugar and ghee was used and uh, meat eating appeared to have been widely prevalent both among the aryans and the non aryans so as far as drinking wine is concerned the ramayana condemns the practice particularly among the brahmanas wine appeared to be of two main varieties namely distilled and natural so among other drinks mentioned are honey madhukukra and later being an admixture of curd ghee honey sugar and water that is sharbat they used to have lots of sharbat which with the basic other fruits so there is a mention of food even in mahabharata in mahabharata from certain references of mahabharata sisamum appears to be used as food milk and milk products like curd ghee is been mentioned and uh, sweets cakes apilipa and sugar cane juice uh, okay are been mentioned so fruits even some wild varieties were eaten by people as regards to meat eating the mahabharata allows it at some places while uh, uh, condemning it other otherwise okay so meat of birds also appear to have been edible their species however is been mentioned further uh, from certain references fish appeared and used as food so um, mahabharata has also mentioned about the food habit of the people in ancient india and it was they were vegetarians and non vegetarians while vegetarian products were based on agriculture that included cereals fruits vegetables and non vegetarian products came from domesticated animals as in the fishers if you go to uh, brahmin families in um, west bengal they have a big pond in front of their house and they they cultivate fish in their own house and they eat so brahmins eat fish in kolkata and as an economy as a primary agriculture there was plenty of food available for everyone in ancient india so now let us get on to the components so what are the basic components that has been mentioned in the yogic diet they are the components as uh, your that is sadvik food rajasvik food and the tamasvik food so these are the three food which is been uh, provided over by the this they speak about the gunas that is your mind how your mind gets reflected so gunas are your characteristics so what are these characteristics everybody may have sadvik guna every, that is loving giving life to others like that will be 
everybody will have the rajasvik quality of being a leader to show your supremacy when the time comes you know and sometimes you also go lacking stability and tamasvik is the uh, laziness which gets everybody will have just like vada pitta and kaba everybody will have and same way tamas is the quality of darkness and inertia dragging us into ignorance and attachment so uh, you get attached to say some kind of bad food some kind of bad characteristics some kind of thing okay so this is how it has been shown uh, when you look into the depict, uh, picture of it which has been highlighted over here by the color itself you can make out the sadavik is shown as a white color where you you are transparent you don't have anything you know evil in you and rajasvik gives a very royal you know you can be a kind of thing and tamas gives a darkness right so this is the image which is being given and when you see the qualities of sadavik rajasvik and the tamasvik qualities so uh, people who take sadavik food and i'll speak to you in the later what it is so sadavik food is uh, uh, taking only the food which is prepared just one to two hours before right and which doesn't contain heavy masala heavy uh, sugar high salt high oil deep fry it won't be there so that is called as sadavik food the rajasvik food contains deep fry non veg masalas uh, oily all that and tamasvik food you know with the food like kur kanji pared which is old yesterday's prepared food you are taking the next day all that comes into the tamasvik food and which gives you laziness so this this is how the food has been qualified uh, i mean given the what are the qualities of the sadvik if you take you know it is basically eliminating frees one from the sinful reactions it leads to sense of happiness and knowledge conditions of happiness it increases your knowledge it gives you a good highness and the planet it keeps you pure real and uh, highly name you your name gets famed very quickly so rajasvik is also a qualities of rajas those warriors who used to go to war field used to eat in the morning and then only till the sunset they could not eat anything so their food was prepared in such a way so that they don't feel hungry at all so that is how it is we and today all the people who go to agriculture field and all they love they have such food and go so that they don't feel hungry they get energy slowly released and to work in the field paddy field or whatever it is so uh, rajasvik basically it is a unlimited desire and longing such people will have the qualities of unlimited desire so rajas used to you know they used to conquer one particular area they were never satisfied they used to desire to take another nearby neighboring clenches that state this state you know and every time war 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 and they used to you know occupy the spaces to uh, the from the neighboring rajas so that is the qualities of every raja and one is bound to material fruit uh, fruitive activities and it results in they become successful actually and conditions to the fruitful activities they get a greater attachment they get successful they get intense endeavored uncontrollable desires and hankers and then the birth what you look into their birth is birth among those is fruitive and human being and misery greed this is what they get into tamas people who, who take the food which is always prepared previously or the night and then the next day they take they become their qualities become ignorant okay they don't care for anything they will not adopt anything as new thing to learn you know they whatever they are born with whatever they have been cultivated at young age they will remain to be in the same they will not change at all even if they go to america london also they remain to be the same so uh, it definitely influence throughout their life sometimes so they they get become ignorant they become diligent uh, i mean delusion they are always in imagination and they become mad little bit and in uh, i mean they don't get they'll be more sleepy lazy they cannot act very fast and then condition to madness they like to be in darkness they don't want even any heavy light to be on and, um, and they are in illusion as i said illusion delusion they are in imagination and then it leads to birth like animals you know Uh, among animals and foolishness they try to show so they also say that it leads to hell hell you know hell so what are the food that basically sadavik consist of is the milk herbal tea ghee 
whole grain, fresh juicy fruits, fresh vegetables, honey, nuts. And then you can see different types of dried, uh, fresh beans uh, varieties. So then when you see the Rajasvik food, it is like coffee, it's all the stimulants, egg, chicken, uh, or garlic, onion, dark lentils, citrus fruits, heavy spicy foods, chocolate, salt, oil, all that, right? And um, tamasvik food like uh, red meat, alcohol, alcohol is prepared in the previous, you know, so many days before. So it leads to sedation. That is why if you prepare it immediately and take it, it becomes juice, right? So alcohol falls into the tamasvik food and then get into the fast food, your fried food, your frozen food. Kept, you have kept it in the free refrigerator and you take it the next day. All that takes to cake, ice cream, all these are not to be, not, it doesn't call as a fresh food, yeah? Then tobacco, soda, uh, refined sugar, all that comes into this kind of thing. So yog, uh, yogic diet, according to traditional text, basically is the, uh, it promotes the clarity and calmness of the mind and is favorable for spiritual growth. So when you get into the sadhvik food, you get into uh, spiritual growth. You don't involve in violence. You don't involve in uh, aggressiveness. You you don't get into ahim ahimsa or you don't lie, all that. You know, that comes naturally. So it is sweet, fresh and agreeable and includes most fruits, nuts, seeds, vegetables, particularly green leafy vegetables, whole grains, honey, pure uh, water, milk, all these things becomes. So these are the examples. You can see the uh, sprouts also becomes one part of the sadhvik food. And Rajasvik food, you can say this is the second of their universal flow is the imitative force of the force of restless movement. Yeah? And um, when this force is predominant in our brain, we become agitated, nervous and restless, unable to calm, our calm down and relax. So Rajasvik food feeds the body but promotes activity and therefore includes restlessness of mind. A Raja, even after conquering a great area, you know, he will be restless. Even if they win and come, you no, know, they'll enjoy overnight drinking and then again they get into all kind of things. So uh, Rajasvik food, as I said earlier, it says the spicy. You can see all these food becomes the Rajasvik food, right? Now I'll change to the next slide. So meaning and the characteristics of Tamasvik food. Alcohol, onion, garlic has also been now been included in that. Any food which is overripe also is that. Okay, now what the yogis need to take. So I'm not advising you all to become a big yogi. The thing that we need to adhere to is so some conductive food for yogis are food grain, basically wheat, rice, barley, milk, ghee, brown sugar, uh, jaggery, sugar candy, crystallized sugar, honey, dry ginger, then uh, pathalu, some of the fruits of like uh, species of cucumber, okay, velerica, all that can be taken, uh, sorakai, all that is it. And then five vegetables of, uh, um, you know, um, we call it as kaddu, it's, uh, all ka, 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 avareka, pusinika, this ka, which ends with ka, you know, all that comes into that kind of thing. And then moong dal, moong dal means uh, uh, pasi parp, we call it as pasi parp in Tamil, which is very easily cooked, easily digested. That is basically taken in a form of khichdi along with the rice as such pulses and pure water. Yogi should also take the nourishing and the sweet food mixture with ghee and milk. They can take, that was the food sometimes even I had, when my mother did not have in North India to cook uh, food, you know, they used to give us ghee with sugar, you know, in the chapati, we used to roll it and we used to have that. So uh, that I can never forget the desi ghee um, given in North India and ghee and milk was, is, can give you heat in your body and it can also generate good health, you know, uh, and give immunity also. It should nourish the dhatus, that is basically the body constitution, and it gives you stable. Okay. Right. Right. Now we shall get on to the nutrition. Now let me get on to the first, um, sorry. Let me go to the syllabus. Yes.
Can you all see? Anybody? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, yes, ma right. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, we have just finished the first unit. That is food in ancient text, right? I have spoken about Ramayana, Mahabharata, uh, Hatha Yoga Pratipika. That has all been mentioned about. And you can also Google some of the other books, uh, you know, which has been mentioned in your syllabus. And then you can have a record with the verses, in which verses, in which chapter it has been mentioned. Okay. And then you can go with the introduction of Ahar, concept of uh, Mithahar classification in yogic diet according to traditional yoga texts we have undergone. We also uh, dealt with the um, vada, pitta and the kabagunas of the food. Okay, any food when it is taken in heavy, how it get, gives imbalance to your body. And uh, we have also discussed about the, I think uh, this unit three, right? Unit three, yogic diet, sadhavik, rajasvik, tamasvik, we have undergone now. Benefits of yogic diet we have just undergone. That is, what are the benefits of sadhvik? Characteristics of rajasvik and the tamasvik food and the principles of yogic diet, right? So now we will get into basically the unit two now, the diet, health, nutrition and health, food, and then how it goes with it. Shall we? Right then. Thank you. Fine. So, uh, when you see the nutrition, you know, with the moment the food comes in front of you and you're taken for a buffet, what you basically um, aspire for, I don't know, but then you ensure that your, your plate is full of all the dishes that are being served over there. So, to start with, they will go with some kind of soup, then they'll have some uh, vegetable bar will be there. You can take the sprouts, greens, you know, legumes, some, some cabbages, some uh, groundnut boiled, then peanuts boiled, you know, those things will be there. Some, and then you can see some uh, maize, you know, sweet corn, somewhere, somewhere, then on onions, and then something like that it goes, and then it goes to the main course of your food. So sometimes they even give the starters. Why they give starters? So that your stomach gets full, you don't go for anything else. So you are loaded with the starters. Starters are basically deep fried, which they, in our Indian tradition, they give. So I, I, when I get into that, you know, I avoid sometimes going with the starters because all the starters that they provide are deep fried either in a vegetarian. Uh, if you go, you they'll have the deep fried again, the vadas, the samosas, the kachoris, something they will serve to you or with the appalam, you know, uh, papadam, and then with the juice, you know, uh, what to say, soup. So uh, I, I get some fooled by eating that. So I sometimes avoid when I want to go for the main course of my food. So it is said that to eat is necessary, but to eat intelligently is an art. So uh, when the food is given, you cannot just take whatever is given. You must select what you can digest. If their plate is of that, then it will not, may not be good to me also. So that understanding you need to have. So what is the food? Food is a source of nutrient. So this is the definition of food. So food is a source of nutrient. Uh, and each nutrient has a specific role to play. Yeah, we cannot deny each one has got their own role to play. Too much or too little or absence of any of these nutrients may result in some deficiency or disease. So uh, that is why we say that eating too much or eating too less could lead to some kind of disease or deficiency, either hair fall or scurvy or skin disease or vitamin C deficiency or some, some kind of disturbance would cause and we have to understand based on that, that in, to what deficient you are in. So when you look into calorie, basically a calorie is a unit of measurement. You can't see with your naked eyes. It is just, you know, you have to understand. How will you understand that? When you take one spoon of carbohydrate, say you take rice, bajra, jawar, chapati, wheat, whatever, you know, one gram of carbohydrate, you know, it would eat four kilocalories. And when you take one gram of protein, say dal, sundal, or chana, or um, some kind of say non-veg or egg or something you have taken. So per gram of protein will give you four kilocalories. When you take ghee or any, any food, when you say rasam, chutney, sambar, everywhere they will have tadka, you know, tadka or the oil is there. So uh, let it be even uh, curd rice. Curd rice will not come without tadka. Tadka, na? 
uh, saute without saute or this thing they will not come out so fat without fat no food was served in the ancient time it says even my mom used to tell me when i go they used to choose to serve me some rice you know i used to take one or two rice simply before the rest of the things comes to my plate choose to say don't take empty rice just wait so you have to take carbohydrate with protein only carbohydrate with not yield you a good calorie to your body how it gets affected so you have to count it by calorie if you are taking 1500 calorie or 2000 kilo calories you are taking so you have to measure it by what you take today the trend has gone i'll speak to you in my latest slide so these are the food you know when you want to give uh, diet chart to your say diabetes patient or to cancer patient or to a asthma patient or arthritis patient or uh, you know or a pregnant women whomsoever you say you, know, you have to look into the calorie value so these are the scientifically framed calories this has been uh, a standard chart where you take one katori of uh, medium katori of rice you know it can give you 100 calorie so you can divide it by four carbohydrate so what is bread bread is carbohydrate two slices can give you 100 calorie so when you prepare a diet chart and give it to somebody you have to look into all these per day if you are giving me 1500 calories right kilo calories how are you going to give me a diet chart so this is how you will give me morning one egg which would comprises of 100 gram okay you give me uh, two slices of bread 100 plus 100 200 then you give me one cup of milk which will give me 134 kilo calories right so you, uh, you will divide my three times meal into calories let's like say to 300 calories for breakfast i can have uh, uh, 800 calories for my lunch and then another 600 for my dinner so uh, it can you can divide it accordingly and in between i may have a cup of tea i may have a cup of uh, uh, say coffee or juice or something like that i may have so you, that also you can give me guidelines if i take a beetroot juice right in between i am adding another 100 calorie never think that uh, beetroot juice or sugar cane juice or these are all zero calorie no 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 it has got calorie even if you take one particular banana it takes 100 calories so uh, energy drink how much so you have to be very careful when you calculate a diet chart for somebody and then give accordingly so it was uh, this great singer mm, i forgot his name the young boy i don't know if somebody can tell me um, anirudh 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 was in ninth standard he was too thin and um, very talented guy and he was taken to talwarkar gym right so one of the i don't want to mention which place so he while he was taken over there you know uh, father gave stating that he we want him to become very you know little he is not getting a appearances so thin like that so they gave him hard drinks that is you know some brandy or some some hard drinks was advised to him father immediately took to the a case right how can a child of this age can be served with the hard drinks which is against the ethics of a particular caste of the family right so you should be very careful when you look at this. then today you know all boys who are going to get married are advised to go with the um and so that some kind of drink so that they'll become shiny they become beautiful they become that no you are adding calories to those people so how it is going to affect your body i'll just speak to you in my latest slide so when you look into the nutrient what are the components when you look into it you know the nutrient components are carbohydrate protein fat vitamin mineral and water so these uh, your food should always contain all these things so there are essential and the non essential nutrients all right so what are the essential nutrients they it means which cannot be produced by your body right so some of the things our body produces which i'll tell you later or produced in insufficient amount by the body and must be obtained in the diet like vitamin a vitamin uh, calcium all these are something which cannot be produced by our body whereas if you see cholesterol if you see amino acid uh, glucose even if you don't eat you know it will generate in your body of its own so you don't have to rely upon that every day you have to take this so what are the non essential nutrients these can be manufactured by the body from the components of food in our diet example cholesterol glucose amino acid okay all these things can be 
produced by our body. Now, what is carbohydrate? Carbohydrate is a compound that contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So, uh, carbon dioxide. So, these are the three which contains. You can see. So, carbon itself says that it has got carbonate. So, if you go get into the carbonated drinks, they say you soft drinks. There is carbon in it. I'll speak to you later. Right? Let me come back here. So, it has got carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. They are known as sugar. starch and the dietary fiber so carbohydrate as i said it gives you 4 kilo calories when you take into so whenever you try to divide it you know if you eat a food that has 20 grams of carbohydrate in it you get 80 calories that is take 4 into 20 which becomes your fuel there are two different forms of carbohydrate simple carbohydrate and the complex carbohydrate so simple is something when you eat that the blood streams absorbs that into their blood and they carry it around it that is why we don't allow the diabetics patient or the people uh, who want energy for a longer duration not to get into a food which contains too much of sugar like uh, you take maza okay chilled maza or cold drink you just gada 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 you drink it when you drink that the chilled thing it will get into your stomach it will try to convert its temperature say your body temperature is say uh, 38 okay 38.7 or something so what happens is you you have taken uh, something which is somewhere around 0 degree or 2 degree or 4 degree of cool drinks right or if you take ice cream it is 0 to 2 degree uh, celsius right when you take that the it will get into your body it will stay there in your stomach for a while it will convert its temperature first that is that that is why it gets time time to get digested so after its conversion what happens the blood comes and absorbs the sugar alone in it to it and it will carry so when the sugar is floating in the stump the sorry blood it will not allow the oxygen supply to the brain it is very lethargic it makes you lazy it gives you numbness you feel irritated you sleep you you don't have energy at all you it doesn't carry any other energy other than sugar that is only instant for a while right if it is a small child it can it's gone if it's a sportsman they will digest it immediately and it is energy is released otherwise for the people who are who cannot digest a, a sugar at all it will float in their blood streams and it will be moving that is why we advise them to get on to the complex uh, carbohydrate so basically functions of the carbohydrate is to provide energy and uh, regulating the blood sugar it helps you to use sparingly the use of protein for energy one minute right and um, it also helps in breakdown of fatty acids that is it and preventing ketosis ketosis is where the protein gets leaked from your uh, body and the uh, through urine it gets leaked off so that leads to that and then biological recognition it possesses it gives you a natural sweetening in your into the food and it also gives the dietary fiber carbohydrate is really 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 essential and complex carbohydrates are bar bread cereals starchy vegetables legumes rice and pasta all these things are complex what is simple as i said you know very simple ones are vitamins minerals occur naturally in fruits milk okay milk products and vegetables right and simple carbohydrates are also known as the processed and the refined sugar such as table sugar syrup candy jaggery uh, honey also becomes to the one part of it okay or any carbonated drinks so what is this carbonated drink when you see in front of you the empty calories this empty calorie is described as a calorie with little or no marking nutritional value so if you see the advertisement when they go ah oh, food juice no 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 they'll give, give very fast they will not tell you that that particular cool drinks has got any vitamin contains no fruit juice or white vitamin or minerals so it is written in the uh, soft drinks when it is sold but all of us none of us see that at all and uh, it is called as carbonated so it has got carbon in it so arenated air okay so that itself leads to carcinogen effect it leads to osteoarthritis it leads to demineralization of your teeth the gap between the teeth occurs much more faster the stomach becomes bulky your bone starts disintegrating it dissolves it dissolves and uh, it gets accumulated in the kidney as a form of calculus 
what is calculus you cannot say it's a calcium deposit it is only when you take this soft drinks it melts or disintegrates the bone teeth wherever calcium is there it melts and then it leads to the accumulation of it in the kidney right so then it is we call it as calculus in it is in so many centimeter or millimeter or whatever it is you know doctors will give you advice so right so an empty calorie has a three same energy content of any other calorie but lacks accompanying nutrients such as vitamin mineral and amino acid what is amino acid is protein right so taking this uh, and spending money on all these nonsense right you are wasting money you are wasting time going to the uh, task mark or to the uh, to the shop bringing some kind of bottle creating um, bad energy in the house the aura of bad energy gets into it and it leads to problem of uh, uh, losing your money you are not uh, Uh, i mean holding your money with you all all kind of thing comes out with it so empty calories are not very fulfilling and leaves hunger look around the next diet bent so what happens some of them will only drink this and they'll sleep off they 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 are losing their kidney so because the stomach is empty the kidney is getting uh, liver is getting loaded and it would lead to jaundice once they get jaundice and again when they go drinking you know what happens they tend to die very faster so this is what is the bad effect of this carbonated and the drinks and the hard drinks takes place so simple examples food containing empty calories are candy soft drinks other sweetening food white bread freshly baked bread um, mary uh, mary grinds or some kind of you know today the market markets are there with so many marinations etc has been sold your beer your wine alcoholic beverages all that leads to um, empty calorie now protein basically is derived from the greek word which is called as proteos which means primary so a mother's milk basically is full of protein that is called as primary food which holds the baby so that is very essential that is come out from the greek word and protein is described as a food component made of amino acid amino acids are formed by carbon hydrogen and oxygen just like carbohydrate protein is also equally the same energy same calorie same components so uh, but the uh, functions are different when you look into the functions of protein it is necessary for the structural integrity of the cells and the growth of the body any child who has to grow masculinely or grow have to grow tall have to rely totally upon the protein that is why mother's milk has become very very essential for the child till 9 months if you feed only mother's milk the baby will grow very very uh, healthy very healthy with full of immunity and it allows you to fight against the infection that is why the newborn baby is given with that and it helps in formation of enzymes digestive juices hemoglobin now when you see itli itli or pongal or khichdi it is a or or bismillah bath you know it is a combination of carbohydrate and protein when carbohydrate and protein are mixed together Uh, and taken inside or ingested it leads to formation of hemoglobin imagine how good it is that is why even the patients uh, any type of patient is given with itli it leads to the production of hemoglobin or the they will not get into anemia so red blood cells are formed in it and then uh, helps to the in the transport of oxygen nutrients and drugs and it helps in repairing if you have ulcer in your mouth if you have ulcer in your stomach or it is a post operative or post pregnancy period of feeding mother uh, you can go with your b complex tablet or whatever is you know uh, tablet is available with the combination of vitamin c so protein has to be taken with vitamin c so that the body absorbs it otherwise it will go leaked from your body so uh, protein needed to production of the milk protein during lactation for the uh, pregnant i mean the post natal lady requires that and it helps in replacing the daily loss of body protein so um, protein cannot be stored in the body if you have 10 eggs you get today and you ate take 10 eggs today you you don't think that you don't have to take for tomorrow it will absorb only based on your height and weight your body will absorb the protein rest of the protein will be leaked from your kidney in a form of urine or through fascia so everything even non veg protein should be taken in exact quantity 
based on your body demand and not taken in over otherwise it will go waste so when you look into the sources of protein there are two types of sources animal sources and the plant sources uh, animal sources basically rely on the egg milk mutton fish poultry and if you go to any hospital you know particularly in military where i was my father was there and um, if they prescribe class 1 you know uh, diet that means it, it used to be accompanied with the protein so uh, all the three uh, time uh, meals you know used to be accompanied by protein and that they used to give to a patient who literally required protein demand in their body very weak people used to be given so uh, animal protein even in vedas is said to be one of the prime uh, it was given but then uh, since their work was not of to go to the war field or to fight with the people so they adhered with the certain kind of food which could just keep them calm and keep their brain open so they were the uh, advisors to rajas brahmanas were advisors to rajas and the raja worked based on the brain of the those people right so what are the plant sources the plant sources are pulses legumes cereals nuts beans oil seeds all those ones are there and they do not contain all essential amino acid okay so they are called as class 2 protein actually scientifically and for examples of those ones are all as just now i have mentioned so protein deficiency could lead to weakness anemia uh, malnutrition delayed uh, healing post operation uh, sutures or post pregnancy you know after the baby is born in uh, near the vaginal wall if you want it to be healed protein has to be given to those people all that every every post operative should be given with the protein so that the healing takes much more faster and a uh, deficiency it would lead to decreased resistance to infection they are more prone to infection and because antibody formation is decreased right so what is fat these are several types of fat there are they are made up of saturated mono unsaturated and poly unsaturated fatty acid so when you see the advertisement basically the oil companies you know they'll give in our oil we have vitamin a e d and k it is this 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 this, this. but all the oil that are edible basically the vegetable uh, oil they basically contain vitamin a e d and k and which gets absorbed okay so fatty acids are organic building up blocks of the fats and without the fats if you take you know uh, food will not be digested food cannot be absorbed so if you think that you can take only a simple idli even those days you know idli with ghee they will give chapati with ghee they will give bread with butter they will take yeah, right yeah, so without fat no food came to the table or to the serving area or to the dining table because uh, without that uh, protein or carbohydrate cannot be absorbed in a very well manner so that is why fat takes a very vital role and every part of our body say take brain heart lungs tissue cells everywhere you need to have fats but if that fat goes above the requirement of an individual then it leads to the problem right so difference between dietary cholesterol and the fats in the food basically the foods with fat do not necessarily contain dietary cholesterol understand that foods with fats do not necessarily contain dietary cholesterol dietary cholesterol is this that is the yellow of the egg that is called as dietary cholesterol so dietary cholesterol a fat like substance is found only in animal products such as meat dairy products butter egg yolks okay it is not found in vegetable at all you cannot find uh, that at all so migraine egg whites plant foods like grains fruits and vegetables will not have this kind of thing right so when you uh, look at the cholesterol there are two types of cholesterols good cholesterol and the bad cholesterol low density lipoprotein and high density lipoprotein so which is associated with the heart disease it starts increasing automatically in an individual after certain age or people with certain diseases um, because uh, the body is not able to digest the cholesterol so when the body is not able to cholesterol what will digest good cholesterol has to be there in your diet to absorb the bad cholesterol from the body so this is the only thing which you need to have the ratio only then they will see the ratio so what is good cholesterol is high density lipoprotein which uh, helps you to 
get away from the heart attack or coronary diseases uh, etc so this is the difference between the two low density and the high density lipoprotein so what are the functions of the uh, dietary fat dietary fat are the basically the essential fatty acid vital for good health if you want to have a good health if you want to have a good shiny skin if you want your metabolic uh, cholesterol metabolism to take place and it also helps to carry or absorb fat soluble vitamins like vitamin a d e and k and it helps in prostate uh, pr uh, prosecutions of the prostate glands hormone substances that regulate some body uh, processes and helps the body use carbohydrate and protein in a in more efficient manner this is what we look for so high cholesterol if it goes high it leads to coronary heart diseases angina is means repeated uh, forming of a heart uh, pain okay so that is called as angina and heart attack goes with that and stroke is when the blood supply to the parts of the brain is stopped it is called as stroke and and uh, when you look into the peripheral vascular diseases pvd if the blood supply to the limbs is reduced you can see this down face it leads to infection it leads to ulcer and then it leads to uh, that ulcer will not heal at all and it leads to the formation of ganglion ganglion is the nerve you know uh, is being formed infection takes place and then when you go to doctor they will amplitude the part of the leg fingers of their leg or hand and then the infection goes up up so it takes place more with the diabetic patients so this is called as peripheral vascular disease so vitamins and the minerals so now the time is felix has given some calls can i attend to okay <laughs> Uh, any doubt please with this i will stop today participant Hello. yeah Hello. Uh, yes ma'am yes ma'am ah. the uh, booklet or ppt can you please share with us any book i'll show you the book which has been given by sports university i uh -huh. don't want to make any remark i have not taken anything from that book i'll just show you can i yeah um uh, ma'am ha huh? uh, ma'am you said uh, in uh, functions of carbohydrates recognition hmm. uh, processes biological recognition processes hmm well, what does it mean biological re recognition means male female okay so a male has to look like a male and a female has to be like a female that is called oh. as biological recognition thank you ma'am i'll show you the uh, notes given by sport this is the sports university uh, notes i don't know whether you able to see uh, are you able to see yes ma'am yes yes so this is the book which has been written and given to me okay and uh, they have not mentioned anything about the ahar or uh, based on the syllabus you know they have asked about the vedic text how it is in ramayana in mahabharata in hatha yoga pradipika what i have taught you i have taught you based on the syllabus okay okay students okay. right you understand that and i have not taken any not even a single sentence from this book and uh, they did have mentioned about some nutrition but the carbohydrate has been mentioned nutrients have been mentioned they have mentioned about the okay in that case uh, um, which one we have to follow your uh, uh, ppt presentation or uh... Uh, sir I, again i will come back to you i have got no remarks to okay. speak on it it depends okay. upon the individual to uh, get on right but i have done the justification okay okay, okay. by exactly. point of view only we are asking examination point of view which one we have to follow sir uh, you have to go based on the syllabus that's it okay 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 thank right. you that's all uh, if you get some contents from that note please take it right mm. you please prepare a book on it notes notes today no none of us have the habit of preparing notes on it like those days yes. and 
we say first content is food in ancient texts and systems of medicine is the first right so you get all the information based on that and get your notes ready fine and next comes whatever it is what are the concepts of diet by all those you know uh, books which has been mentioned what is diet what is health what is nutrition what is food what is the food and my you just have the exact notes uh, that you need to have you need to have okay right okay thank you yeah thank you vivekanand sir next you have few more minutes you can ask questions anything that you could not understand 31 participants are there yes sendil sir madam ah uh, madam how to measure the protein uh, carbohydrate which is needed to the body so carbohydrate can be 70% of your diet okay so uh, protein can take 27% of your diet so uh, or you can make it as 57% of your carbohydrate 27% of protein and then 12% of your fat so uh, when you pour one spoon of ghee in your rice with dal purple and rice what you can calculate it immediately so how many katori of rice is there once i remember of having gone to sarvana bhavan not now around 25 years before and i ordered punjabi thali so when i got the punjabi thali in that and they gave me chap i they asked me puri or fulka i asked for fulka i got fulka i ate that and they asked me kashmiri pulao or something i when i ordered they gave me a small katori of rice you right i asked him sir what is this they said only 78 grams of rice will be served to you madam you imagine 25 years before i was served only 78 grams of uh, rice i ate that and i came back when i came in the night i was very fine because it is a balanced diet which i got and that is how i am supposed to take i have one katori of dal one katori of curd one katori of cauliflower with aloo and chana with one katori no, 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 four no, no. fulkas that's it so i am having a nutritive diet which i must digest timely i must feel hungry only then i can go for food so the, you need to see the calories calories today earlier they used to say you should not take deep fry or fatty food see you take fatty food take cheese you take ghee don't go for deep fry don't go for samosa don't go for puri don't go for adhirasam which is deep fried you go for it but calculate your calories okay so if you take only uh, such thing you calculate one gram of uh, fat will give you 9 kilo calorie so instead of taking six idlis you can take three puris okay you can calculate it next accordingly you need to calculate uh, ha ma'am but the calories will vary from person to person right depending on their body mass index yes 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 bmi your metabolic rate there you can google and see the formula to identify uh, the that form it is based on the age uh, height and the weight weight is the height is the main thing but it doesn't implies to people of old age because age doesn't sometimes come over there right so that's it okay mamta you can google that and see ma see the formula next time i'll try to get you the formula of that next hello ma'am ha ah uh, this is venkat uh, ms yoga yeah ma'am during uh, kaba or uh, any other uh, criteria hmm. shall we practice the yoga otherwise we uh, we have to give some uh, hmm. period uh, time to leave uh, practicing the yoga first you ensure that the nasal flow stops okay while okay, the sinus uh, gets affected because the uh, it gets you know all these area sinus gets uh, filled with the fluid okay so when okay. you uh, practice any kind of thing you know it creates a, again a reaction because this area are bulged they are swelling full of swelled up so when you try to even try to irritate you know the sneezing may increase so allow it to rest by diet by taking uh, ginger by taking uh, pepper those gada kada we call it as uh, you know uh, kashayam in tamil we call it as kashayam in hindi we call it as kada you can have a one or two kadas arrest this flow and then you can start doing go with pranayama 
go with the yogic practice it will become balance you need to keep on doing that to keep the balance of kaba if you stop doing it the kaba will increase because it is now overflowing kaba is overflowing so right from the beginning from the young age you try to maintain the, all the three so that nothing goes high okay thank you okay ma'am thank you but uh, one more question ma'am yeah uh, while i am inhaling i, I can't uh, able to get the breed uh, tamil la sollala ma'am ah tamil la sollu na mooch edukka mudiyala mooch edukka mudiyala ilithu pudichu ore 15 counts enala ilithu pudichu irukka mudiyadu irukka mudiyadu Hmm. But uh, in uh, Excel, can hmm. 15 count are the same 15 count on the other one. Okay, see, there is called as is any you know, practice. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. There always the breathing has got four aspects okay, inhalation, retention, exhalation, and then again a, a residual volume. We call it as dead space. Okay, so these yeah. are the four things which goes with in Hindi. We call it as. Uh, um, uh, rechika purka and then kumbaka kumbaka comes with andri kumbaka and bahari kumbaka so when you inhale you go slowly you hold the breath right and then you are trying to exhale yes, while sir. you exhale what happens is the uh, gas uh, air gets accumulated in all parts of your tissues so you are inhaling 5 liters of air inside you are not able to exhale all the 5 liters of air because the body is retaining around 500 ml to 750 ml of air inside so through yogic practice by practice you have to throw longer exhalation so that the toxin air completely from the body cannot be thrown away at least another 500 ml you can throw away by long exhalation and hold it after exhalation that is called as bahari kumbhaka if you hold that okay, then you will practice 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 and you will become fine okay venkat john okay, okay. thank you yes elizabeth uh, i have two questions my first question is uh, just by eating sattvic food all the time is it enough to lead our daily life and the second question is um, the tasmic food also once in a while when we are taking that that also will change our uh, body and mind uh, thinking everything and all okay right so the first thing is you are asking whether i can rely upon only sadhvik food so sadhvik i will not advise you to be of that because our nature of work in today's world we need to drive never people never used to drive at all okay i don't know uh, I, i i'll take myself right i get up i do my complete kitchen work 2 hours it takes minimum 2 hours i go do my fitness jog or do something i come back again i sit in after getting fresh i come and sit in front of the computer i work on my powerpoint or i go to the class i when i go to this college i'll stand there and take all my classes i'll never sit and take the class right so how much of energy i'm spending i need to have energy i have to see all the men student women student i have to balance everything then i have to attend the meeting again i take my car i sometime go to the sports university i drive again i come back 40 on for up and down 80 kilometers then sometimes my mother would used to call me i used to take the car again go sometimes i used to be driver right from morning till night i have done that also so and then again come back in the evening we need to cook we cannot rely upon that simple food which gets digested very easily you you are exhausted your energy is released you are exhausted then you have to reequip yourself so you can take a solid meal okay which comprises of uh, sufficient carbohydrate protein and fat which will keep your brain your heart your functioning of the lungs and the muscles everything fine and you should not feel uh, depressed you know when you are hungry you should be still you know energetic sometimes in your adverse condition you can have sadvik food sometimes today we have started advising uh, palid to all the sportsmen so uh, what we make them to have palid and go for their another you know, activities come morning why because it has got a good bacteria in it okay so uh, idli la good bacteria irukku curd la good bacteria irukku palid la good bacteria irukku it cleans the guts so uh, once in a while ninga sonna mari you can go with the 
a sadhvik food which will clean the guts and they'll bring you kura is sadhvik food you can have once in a while clean your complete intestinal system and you'll feel fresh so curd is sadhvik okay when you compare this way that way so, curd is sadhvik plus uh, tamasvik both both it is so you can have that it will not give any burning sensation to you that's it all right am i okay ma'am uh, sorry anusuya yeah elizabeth yeah. tell me no no uh, my uh, second thing is by eating ta uh, tasmic food mm. does it uh, change our thinking process yes. if we uh, take continuously or if if we we can take once in a while and we can balance it yeah yeah you see i have been telling you have a balance in all Okay. Don't eat same food every day. You a okay. plate should be like India flag. Yeah. Have green, orange, white, and yellow. Uh, blue could be like your oil. Okay. okay, oil or you see even if the salad they prepare, they'll have olive oil olive added oil. on it. Okay, you see chutney, they'll have tadka, kadugu potu kadu. They'll have rasam, thali panga, sambar, thali pundir. Yedala thali pila. You just see our food item and see. Yeah. If you make only idli, also podi idli. What is that? Idli ille you make oil. Oil is there podi idli. If podi ada thotte saapen. Illa only la palle the wood ka na inna irukde. You have oil irukke masala irukke uppu irukke alla. So apparam apparam. What is that? Only rasam apparam. You have a protein in apparam. You have oil in that. It ba. So our system of eating was always a best one, which went on with it. Only thing we change our system to pizza, to burger, and to KFC and deep fry. Now all are junks. They are called as junks. They are fast foods. Fast foods you don't go. You can have the Indian tamasvik food, which can be taken once in a while. Next, thank you, ma'am. Yes. Can we have leftover food next day? Is it good uh, or not? Basically, see, it depends how you have been preserving it. Say, for example. um uh, i have prepared mean kolamb okay today so it has got its own protective ingredient in there bacteria will not attack for 24 hours it it's a fist like that but say me if i have dal okay boiled and if i keep it uh, for tomorrow it will have the pungent smell it gets spoiled very fast if i have the, uh, coconut chutney okay which i prepare it today and i have it tomorrow it won't be so you should be very smart enough to understand whether it can be taken or not if you take palad it will not be bad if you take curd which is prepared night you press it and then take it the next day you can make more kolamb or whatever it is you can go with it right so you have to be very intelligent eating is an art eat intelligently but your body is not dustbin leftover cannot be taken Ah, dustbin, dustbin, dustbin. Give it to dog. Give it to crow. Give it to people. Give it to neighboring. That is why in all the festivals they used to say, "Give to the neighboring the neighbors and then eat." Why? Because you make so much, you should not eat all together. Spread it. Give it to everybody. That was the uh, thing which they had those days. Right. Next, ma'am. One more doubt. Hmm. It's like migraine and uh, indigestion are connected. Getting migraine headache. In case in case of migraine, migraine and indigestion like indigestion, you take omo water. I get water. my yeah. It could be due to eye checkup. You go or food cannot be digested. You sometimes don't feel like sleeping, so you get uh, what the thala pain or migraine you get. So you can have some pressure point to be pressed, right? You can ask somebody. You lie down, ask somebody to press it from the back. you can have some omo water you can it could be due to cold also sometimes you may not know due to sinus also you may get that so you can have some ginger with uh, uh, pepper you know with honey you have that kada you will become fine you will be fine so uh, only uh, kashayams are good today you can have that you will be okay thank you ma'am ma'am is this is during kumbhaka normal pardon Uh, getting dizzy when you are holding your breath after inhale yes, yes. doing kumbhaka why brain become uh, head uh, oxygen supply to the brain gets stopped okay hmm. so uh, we give this kum, uh, breathing you know when you inhale from your mouth and you exhale from your mouth you know what happens you feel giddy 
Why? Because yeah. the supply to the brain is slightly stopped for a while, and you feel giddy. That is the time you get. You don't get distracted to something. You get, you know, um, the labor pain. In the labor ward, we give this to people because they can get distracted from their labor pain. And as you say, you know, when you, even if you go with the kapala bhati also too much, sometimes the either it can oxygen supply in the brain get seized or can be heavy. That is why after some time it will go off. Don't worry mm -hmm. about that. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So with this, we try to complete the class, and tomorrow, I'll Felix sir will tell me at what time the class would be tomorrow at same time. I'll try to complete the complete syllabus. Okay.